Art Loft is brought to you by... Where there is freedom, there is expression. The Florida Keys and Key West. The Miami-Dade County Tourist Development Council, the Miami-Dade County Department of Cultural Affairs, and the Cultural Affairs Council, the Miami-Dade County Mayor, and the Board of County Commissioners, and the Friends of South Florida PBS. Art Loft. It's the pulse of what's happening in our own backyard, as well as a taste of the arts across the United States. In this episode, Women in the Arts. Chitra Ganesh, a visual artist dreaming in multiverse, capturing the female experience at Fountainhead Arts. And we meet Ruth Barote, solo but not alone. From comic books to Hindu imagery, feminist artist Chitra Ganesh is dreaming in multiverse. We jump into her latest works in animations at the Frost. Hi, my name is Chitra Ganesh. I am a visual artist based in Brooklyn, New York. This series is called Multiverse Dreaming. This is where the title of the show comes from in some form. They're almost like little fragments of dreams. I always drew. I was obsessed with drawing unicorns and rainbows and clouds for when I was in kindergarten. But I think behind everything is always actually the human touch. And it's that's also something that people really respond to. Even in this day and age of technology and everything that technology can do from 3D printing to AI generated visual imagery, people are still obsessed with painting. The first comic book I made, I printed on an inkjet printer and I made 150 copies and I brought it to comic book stores and I consigned it there and I gave it out to friends. I often feel like how each artist draws a line is almost like a fingerprint. That idea is really exciting for me still. The central figure in this work is inspired by a teenage protester who gained a national visibility during the protests against the murder of Freddie Gray in Baltimore. Her work speaks to so many different audiences. It's conversant. It's, you know, dreaming in multiverse. I always think multiverse as a way of conversing with many different audiences. It's very important for me that my work reaches um, a broad cross-section of audiences. I love getting videos sent of children watching my animations. Images that we see in childhood and the stories of childhood, they function as this really powerful collective memory bank that's imprinted deep within us. So you can see that there's a lot of visual iconography in my work. It's hard to, to know if the figure has ripped her heart out or found that her heart is ripped out. Behind you is a wonderful mural that I think just draws in our visitors. It brings you in like the universe, it, looking up at the sky and the stars. It's so exciting to see this mural. I love how this iridescent paint came out, it's so great. I wanted to figure out how to make a mural that was really immersive and that could hold the whole space and that could provide like a moment of pause um, and reflection for the audience. Something I really appreciate about art, especially handmade art or art with that kind of touch is that it invites us to slow down. Be with your thoughts and be with your responses. 
We really haven't had any time to sort of digest. Things just keep moving forward at a breakneck pace. Fountainhead Arts is celebrating Women's History Month with this intimate look at three artists, their practices, and how their work addresses the female experience. I work as an undisciplinary artist, so a lot of the work that I make is thinking about how a medium can question other media. So I might use performance to question photography or film to question performance, and a lot of times the media that I'm working with is intended to ask a question. I work with materials that are kind of on the line between luxury and utility, and they are also used for preservation of archives. And for me, the basis of an archive is the black feminine social space. So I think a lot about black femme aesthetics and I work with family members and people that I love in order to show the ways that our bodies and space ultimately are the foundation for which we understand value. My work is a documentation of stories about healing from sexual violence. I'm documenting the types of knowledges your grandmother would tell you about how to be safe in this world. I use a lot of found jewelry and people also donate items to the pieces, so jewelry, clothing, worn objects. Being indigenous and thinking about artifacts, it's beautiful to have a practice to ask people what they want to be remembered with as kind of like a protective factor in the work. There's all these layers folks have to interact with before they can even see the person. There's a mask, there's jewelry, there's audio, there's voice. Um, there's boundaries in the space before you can interact with my work, which is important. I think safety is such an important part of my work because for me, telling my own story as well, it needed to be done in a safe way. It's a conversation everybody needs to be a part of if there's ever gonna be any change. I think of myself as a nouveau pictorialist, which is this term that I made up that refers back to this early moment in the beginning of the history of photography, where, first of all, women and queer people were behind the camera in an unprecedented way. But it's a moment where photographs were really constructed in the same way that my images are made. So costume and materials are used on top of subjects to sort of create these allegorical images. And I approach my work in the same way. The female gaze has been central to my work. I felt really cautious about the idea of photographing women because I was very aware of a long, violent history of the camera and the female body. And as I've continued to photograph, I've given myself a little bit more like agency and permission to be a responsible practitioner. But it's always with this very cautious and particular idea of trying to make my subjects Monumental, I think about photographs as monuments. So even if they're representing something nefarious, I still want them to feel uh, important and like themselves and beautiful. Beauty is important. Graffiti, street style, and Japanese manga are just some of the influences on Ruth Barote. This film focuses on the dynamic young artist from Broward and her first individual show in Miami. Here's Ruth Barote, solo but not alone. Everything's waiting for downtown. With Ruth, it's interesting because we usually look for graphic designers that are sort of more that traditional visual design capabilities, so do PowerPoints and you know, really basic sort of static imagery and, and things of that nature that's obviously in high demand for our clients. But Ruth is an artist at a whole other level. But it's not just TikTok, it can be LinkedIn, Reddit, mm -hmm. anything. She's always inspiring the whole team. She brings culture to our office. She lets us know what's cool. Yeah. And then when I saw him again, right, they gave him like free off-white like sneakers. Huh? And he wore those things to the ground. I mean, just check out some of his great stuff that she's helped us produce. I'm like, this is just 
a tiny glimpse. She's certainly excited about her art, but she's excited and puts this just amazing sort of wholesome energy into all of the work that she does. And I, th I think that's part of why she's so successful at a young age and why it's kind of breaking through because it's, it's almost like people can feel that authenticity in her work. I'm preparing for my first ever solo exhibition that's happening during Art Basel. I'm right now doing like an underpainting. I'm working on like a few extra pieces, adding to the ones I've already done. It takes a moment for me to like try to get in the zone after like a long day of like working. Cause sometimes it can be really hard to like try to be creative outside, like trying to work in your passions after doing like work all day. But like, it just takes like some discipline to like get into the mindset again. Sometimes it doesn't always work, but it's like, you know, it's the lifestyle. Oliver is like a really cool, fun uncle. <laughs> Tell me how to like not to actually go too fast. Just go like at a, I'm at, a, at a mechanical pace and try not to stay in one area. Make sure you keep your arm moving at all times. And how to like actually try to blend the colors. Always have like one overcome. Pretty much come on top. What's the first rule of spray paint? Shake the can. And then? Shake it some more. And then shake it some more. <laughs> the project was defined ultimately to paint a big building. And so we set out to develop the imagery that would ultimately become the mural. I hosted Ruth last summer. She was here at my studio at Swamp Space. So he would see me like painting and drawing and he would give like two cents and give like his ideas of like what materials to go in and how to use something properly. And we set her up with some canvases and paints and things like that. And then, you know, we, we got to know each other then. And then just be on his way and then let me take control. And then he would come back and give his two cents again. And I would be like, yeah, that makes a lot more sense. I think I learned more than she did. You know, I'm, I'm all over the place, and I, I'm the first to admit it, but Ruth was, she was like a rock. It was great to get like an outside perspective on things, especially from someone as professional as him. But uh, yeah, we did good, we did real good. It was like a really great mentorship in a way. I really looked up to him as a mentor. I did six car-sized clouds for a show in Germany. Oh. It, the, you couldn't walk in here, it was crazy. Uh, these are leftovers. How did you make them? They're, like, did you they're, have... they're made in India. Oh. Ruthie, you want a coffee? And no, then I have like DJ fun. friends that will like, you know, they like to party, so. That's what I want. And you're doing, these are this is on paintings. the wall? Yeah. That's like a, a transfer or you're just right, you're gonna go right on the wall? Oh no, those are like the four paintings that I placed there. So mm -hmm. those are like the four artworks that are gonna be on that side. But is this a painting here? It is, but it's already done. I just okay. didn't update the pictures. I don't care. This is your world. I was trying to prove every day, 
Miami Art Week is from 28 to the 5th or something. But we'll open early mm. for all the locals. We, we just, you know, get the opening out of the way and, and have a good time and then so that we can do all the other stuff. Yeah. We're currently located at the edge of the design district of the Miami Design District. The space functions as a center for, for all the artists in the community. A lot of the artists in Miami come together and exhibit together and have a place where they can do so. Being here at the Miami Art Society, this is pretty much a place where I like to do like my large paintings because my place is too small. And the show's gonna be at Swamp Space, which is across the street. How does it feel to you to be part of that stable of artists? you know, who are, you know, really have a great street reputation. It feels like a community. Comic and everybody, it is a family. Yeah. First time I came across Ruth, I tried to order a t-shirt of hers. I thought it was really dope. And she had sold out of the shirt, which is good. And then I ran into her at a sneaker event in downtown Miami. And then I, I saw her and we got to meet in person. I showed JP some of her stuff. And of course, the work speaks for itself. I understand he had been following her before and then he went to see her that day. And he posted her doing some sketches and doing some work. And I saw it right away and, and I commented on it. I thought it was really impressive. Immediately he was like, hey, this, this girl's super talented, her work's amazing, it speaks for itself. If I'm not mistaken, I messaged her. If it wasn't that, that same moment, it must have been the, the day after, and I think two or three days afterwards, uh, we had a meeting to kind of go through it, because right away I, I knew that I wanted to exhibit her here. Right now, I'm doing prep work for my paintings. I'm applying uh, some watercolor grounder since this is like a mixed media print I'm doing. I like anime and I like animation stuff, but she has her own spin on it. But it's culturally relevant to her and, and myself. Things that I'm into, you know, which like sneaker culture and fashion and just like hip hop culture in general. And how it's worked is that since I like to use like a lot of watercolor and gouache, and like water like down acrylics. I put down this grounder to not only like recreate and mimic what it's like to paint on like watercolor paper or watercolor material, but also like it also gives like a nice like rough texture that kind of like gives it like a relief feeling. It's cool how she takes her own spin on it because there's, there's other people who do it, but like she has her own way of doing it where it's a little bit more fine art, where it's like more painterly. Each character is kind of a world in its own that you have to really digest and slowly take apart each part of, of the little drawing because it, it's telling a very, very interesting story. It's pretty like nerve-wracking because for the last couple of weeks I was thinking of like what works I can like develop to like expand my universe and like what ways I can actually like conceptualize more so people can pretty much uh, understand pretty much like the identity I want to like get from this. Like I want people to like see the work and just kind of feel enveloped in like the story and like the universe and the environment. People want to see, they want to see like what she's going to put out and people, people want to collect her stuff. People like to wear her stuff. It's kind of like a stylist in a way, you know, like people will probably look at her and be like, man, I want to dress like that or I want to wear my stuff like that. So it's like a full package. So it's kind of cool to see what she's going to produce where it's like a space where she gets to walk into and experience Ruth. David is Ruth's husband. Been boyfriend and girlfriend from when? Since high school. Yeah, 2014. Yeah, from since high school. <laughs> and one day he came home and said, Mommy, I have a girlfriend. I was like, you have a girlfriend? <laughs> okay, because David is a very quiet person. He do not socialize. 
So when he came over and said he had a girlfriend, it was a big deal for me. <laughs> he sent me like a special box <laughs> where it has like a photo of me when I was like working in their factories. It's almost overwhelming how much choice there is here. So I can look at a model and decide what I want it to look like. And then once you flip it up. So yeah, these are pretty much my most prized possessions. I only wore them at least once, but I only wore them for like about 10 minutes. <laughs> I want to just keep it for like safekeeping and just like as memorabilia. But I, this was like um, a rendition where I kind of made it inspired by like Miami nightlife. So I had like this Miami Vice like colorway. I asked for like, you know, a nice like hot pink lake, uh, trace right around the rim of the sole. I wanted to have like this kind of like nice reflective blue on like the Adidas stripes. And right on the bottom, there's like a little like um, a see-through part where it says like 305 on it. She yeah. inspires us. Now we're yeah. now getting into now, Jordan. Jordan. She, Me and her, we're he, the same size. So yeah. if I buy a Jordan, she could wear. If she buys a Jordan, I could wear. Because we're trying to get on Roots level. And right <laughs> now we're like at the bottom. Us. She inspired us. <laughs> I got like different fashion books about like sneakers. This was one I got when I went to like a bookstore in New York. These dunk lows where it just has like a, like a nice like fur. Another big inspiration is this guy, Satoshi Kon. He made some of my favorite movies. He made Perfect Blue and Paprika and one of my favorite movies of all time, Tokyo Godfathers. So like he's, you could tell like he just was like a fine artist that like went towards like making anime because he loved anime so much. This is like one of my recent, recent favorites. And it's this art book from uh, a work called Doro Hidero. Uh, it's made by a woman named Kyu Hishida. So like, this is like one of my favorite characters. His name is Shin and he's, you can see him wearing some like dunks. She has like, she drew like this giant cockroach and he's like rocking Converse. Ruth is a big inspiration for finding something that you want to do. Do, yeah. yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm, she Cause she's yep. making it work. Yeah, she yeah. sure is. <laughs> showed me the frame we just kind of had this idea of like maybe we can like just make a piece where he like cuts out like this wood panel for it and it'd be just be ready just to plop back on to the back of the frame so he kind of got had this already piece of wood and he cut it down shaped it out and then it was pretty much ready to go so because of that I'm just gonna like take advantage of it After not using charcoal for so long, I think like with the wood, it's like a nice, a nice like balance for it. It's a Baroque kind of style like frame. That's what it reminds me of. So I think I'd just be cool just to have that just to juxtapose with my style. A lot of the works were coming off of a project I was doing for my BFA since I graduated this year. It comes off the story called Low Resolution, where it's about this girl who lives like on a planet where it's basically overstimulated with ads everywhere and she works like a menial, low minimum wage job at like this refuel station 
And one day, while she's like working her shift, these like dudes come in, kind of like rob the place of the fuel and make her succumb to like an accident where she like, she hits her head. There's like different undertones of capitalism and overconsumption, mental health within like the communities and working in like a thing that you don't really want to and just living the life of just bare minimum of it, you know? So I'm wearing this trench coat that I bought because I like trench coats and I think they look cool. I'm wearing this cowboy bebop shirt because I like anime and it kind of goes with the theme where it's like, you know, space and dystopia. I'm wearing like these super baggy pants because I like to dress super baggy. And I'm wearing these Air Max Cactus 93s. They're pretty much one of my favorite Air Maxes. <laughs> Yes, sir. I met Wood when she applied for one of her public art projects. She was barely 17 at the time, so she became the youngest artist to receive a commission from the county. What I remember from her is her uh, confidence. She was so confident about her design proposal. She blew the panel away. She had a voice. Some artists spend a lot of time searching to find a voice, but she had it since the beginning. I think it's fantastic. I think it's somewhat of an extension of what she started on in her BFA exhibition. And just to see it kind of have the space to come through to fruition here. For me, this is just the beginning, and I feel like these characters and her, her ideas have a lot of room to expand. Yeah, I expected it to be great. I like the pieces that she did. You know, there's a lot of different things, all the mediums that she works with, her prints and her digital work, and it's really great to see it all together. And she put it together really well with Oliver. So we've had a fantastic opening night. We sold a couple pieces already. It's really good, honestly. Like, it was such a huge turnout, more than I expected. So many people pulled up that I never met before. They've just been like following me up for like the past like years. And it's been crazy, honestly. Like I'm actually feeling really proud tonight. I've been getting so much good feedback on the show. People like really vibe with the story. They were like loving it, telling me how much they liked like the projection mapping. And they were all surprised that I kind of like did the whole thing, <laughs> that this is all my work. They didn't expect that. So now people know I'm like, do a lot of like multimedia stuff, which is cool. I even talked to like a kid who told me like his like he loved the story, which is great feedback for me. So yeah, it was just like a hundred percent like a success. <laughs> Find full episodes, segments, and more at artloftsfl.org and on YouTube at South Florida PBS. Art Loft is brought to you by Where there is freedom, there is expression. The Florida Keys and Key West. The Miami-Dade County Tourist Development Council, the Miami-Dade County Department of Cultural Affairs, and the Cultural Affairs Council, the Miami-Dade County Mayor, and the Board of County Commissioners and the Friends of South Florida PBS.